Welcome to Genealogy Coffee Break. Today, I am here with Ilya Slavutsky, Rutgers History PhD program student, um, who's very knowledgeable in Russian and Soviet history. So Ilya, today I wanted to talk to you about a topic that comes up a lot for people doing uh, family history, the pogroms of the Russian Empire that we hear a lot was the reason for somebody's grandparents coming. They were escaping from the pogroms um, or like the pogroms made life in the Russian Empire impossible. And that's why they emigrated to America. What, what does that mean? What are people talking about really? I, I think a lot of us hear the word, but we don't really know what exactly it means what were programs yeah well first of all hello Hi. Uh, thanks for having me um yeah so obviously pogroms get talked about a lot in the exact way you mentioned people talking about this is what led us to leave and come to america often um what they're actually referring to because there are multiple episodes in russian and even early soviet history that are now thought of as pogroms but that's not what people are not talking about all of those people are specifically talking about the almost always the 1880s and sometimes going up to through the 1905 revolution like maybe up to 1906 1907 which are two separate waves but the main one they talk about is the 1880s and this was basically triggered by the assassination of Tsar Alexander II in 1881. And one of the uh, conspirators was a Jewish woman who uh, got sort of like outsized attention from the media. And it's disputed how much this media attention uh, contributed to the outbreak of pogroms. but. Uh, this is when we start seeing them. The assassination happened in March and the pogrom started in April, like immediately after basically. Um, and what, what they were, were uh, outbursts of local violence basically in towns, not in the countryside. Uh, they spread to the countryside, but they actually started in uh, more urban areas um, by local uh, some, some, there's accounts that many of the people involved like owed money to Jews in the town. Uh, people, uh, railroad workers were involved uh, because sort of the railways were blooming at the time, and the railroad workers were hearing all the news coming out of St. Petersburg, so they they kind of were connected to the stories and maybe even spread. You know, I don't know. A lot of this is still, there's a lot of conjecture still about this stuff. Uh, and the, the violence, it was basically like a riot kind of event, not, um, not ordered from above most, most, most of the time, as far as uh, I'm aware. Um, and, you know, there was murder, there was rape, uh, some looting. But overall, in the these 1880s pogroms, which were heaviest in 1881, uh, the interesting thing is that they actually were the least deadly by far wave of pogroms in the entire series of pogroms that happened in Russian history. And yet they're the ones that most people have associated in their minds when they think of the word pogrom. Uh, the Fiddler on the Roof, those are the pogroms. Uh, the, the majority of the sort of great migration, American Jewish turn of the century migration, it, it references these 1880s pogroms. But even the later uh, 1903 to 1906 pogroms, which included the famous Kishinev pogrom, even those were significantly more serious and had far more victims than the ones in the 1880s. Uh, and even they are still very, very small compared to the pogroms uh, that would happen during the Russian Civil War, which nobody in American Jewish life almost 
seems to ever talk about. Interesting. So Outside these were like riots of anti-Semitism boiling over into physical violence. What was the goal just to intimidate Jews, demonstrate dissatisfaction and anti-Semitism, but not organized, you're saying not organized and ordered by the government? Yeah, uh, well, it's unclear, I guess, what the goals of every single individual were. We can't really know that. I don't, I'm not aware of there being uh, like a lot of written accounts of people saying, this is why I went and like killed this Jewish person. Um, but it seems like the Jews were blamed for, I mean, the death of the czar, you know, we can question how much this like, it seems to have been tied into economic factors along with the death of the czar and sort of may, maybe whatever anti-Semitism there may have been. It's very hard to pick these questions apart. The question of motivation is like very difficult to, to know uh, as far as I'm aware for these pograms. Um, as far as the authorities, uh, they did not, they, 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 their role was more of a tacit sort of approval or acceptance of the pogroms uh, where there would be violence and they would basically not stop it or sometimes people would be arrested who had done something violent and then the czar would put out a decree that exonerated them. Uh, in fact, the czar, there is, there is one line of thinking or line of interpretation where the czar um, actually thought that the pogroms in the early years, 1881, 82, 83, the czar was of the opinion that the Jews basically caused the pogrom themselves. So it wasn't so much an attitude of uh, let's, you know, the, the government wants to kill the Jews. It was more of like, well, this is happening and, and you know, we're not going to like do much to get in the way. Um, yeah. so, so, so there was no police intervention or any. Security. There was some, there was some, and uh, it, there were even cases, it was just very little. Uh, and and it, there were even some cases, and this sort of disproves the theory that this was like a top down process that was ordered by the government. There were multiple cases of the Russian authorities stepping in and stopping pogroms altogether. That also happened. But um, there are many, many accounts of uh, Russian authority figures letting it happen, maybe even joining in sometimes, but not kind of coming in and being like, here, this is what we're doing now. Right. Interesting. So, um, Today, we're keeping it brief and narrow to the Russian Empire, but our researchers can contact us, and we have a lot of information about the broader category of anti-Semitic violence that could also be described as pogroms in Poland after the war in the 1940s in the Arab world, uh, um, Al-Farhud riot or pogrom. Um, but Tell, tell us what was the difference between those early 1880s pogroms and the later 19-teens um, violence and how that is not necessarily connected to the Jewish American history that we're referencing. Yeah, um, so the, the 19-teens pogroms, which uh, basically started already in 1917, but really we're talking about 1918, 1919, 1920, uh, occurred in the wake of the of like World War I and really the beginnings of the Russian Revolution, which caused numerous changes in government in various places. And, and so oh, I just want to say very importantly, almost all these pogroms happened in Ukraine. The 1880s ones and the 1905 ones and the 1919, 1920 ones. Um, all part, it was part of the Russian Empire, and then most of that area was part of the Soviet Union. But 
in the Civil War period, I'm talking about 1919, it was flood over. So there was constant changes of government and the never ending chaos of those three years or so uh, was a huge contributing factor that did not exist in the 1880s. In the 1880s, there was like, so like economic distress and sort of after the czar's death, there was sort of this mood, but uh, the government was there. Like it was, it was a stable, more or less situation. Whereas in 1918, 1919, 1920, you had different armies coming through. Uh, like every few months you had the, um, the Bolsheviks were there first. And then um, a bunch of Ukrainian nationalists took control of much of Ukraine. There was anarchist contingents in Southeast Ukraine. Then the white army, the anti Bolshevik Russian army came through, etc. So uh, those pogroms were perpetrated mostly by people that were serving in one of these military forces. They were not, uh, they were not, they, one can classify them as still being spontaneous, but they were not spontaneously done so much by like the local, uh, the local guy who like owed some, some Jewish tavern owner money. They were really like an army contingent would come in and decide that, uh, if it was the white army, it was often, you know, that the Jews, that the Jews are like friends with the communists basically. And like, they, they have to be, you know, killed and, uh, or, or sometimes people wanted to loot from them. And this was the group that it was most acceptable to sort of loot from. Um, but the, the other one thing I want to say about this is that the scale is not even comparable. The, and, and this is, gets into the second, the other part of your question um, of why don't, you know, why do we hear about one, but not the other? Uh, the 1880s pogroms were, this is interesting. This is the ones we know about. They were extremely minimal in scale compared to all the other pogroms that happened in Russian history. I think the estimate is like under 100 people died wow. in like that wave, which is compared to the other ones, like very small. In the uh, Russian Civil War pogroms, uh, we're, we're estimating about 50,000. So the numbers are not even comparable. And the reason we don't hear about that is simply because the American Jewish immigration mostly occurred before the Russian Revolution. Uh, most of the Jews that were there in uh, 1918, 1919, 1920 uh, had a much harder time leaving after all of that. And then the Soviet Union sort of consolidating and it was harder to get out than people in the 1880s, 1890s, 1900s. Remember, the pogroms happened in 1881. But maybe your family takes like 20 years to get its act together to get out. And they had that time. Whereas in the 1917, 1918, within, you know, three or four years, it's really hard to leave. And within like 10 years, it's impossible. Right. Um, so mentioning those um, different army and mi military group factions, because um, you can mention and identify them all by name. That's one way that people could research that second wave in the in the early 1900s. Is there any kind of list or database or some place that people can find names of pogrom, pogrom victims? Yeah. So when we talk about the pogroms of the of the Russian Civil War period, the 1918 to 1920, uh, there is the Cherikover archive at Evo, um, which has many, many, many lists that were compiled by various, like the Joint Distribution Committee and other local organizations and just a bunch of organizations that were trying to collect information on what happened, including lists of the dead and the sometimes the injured, uh, which often had uh, full names, sometimes first names, but I think many, many full names in Russian and in Yiddish, Not, almost nothing in English. It was almost completely in Russian or in Yiddish. So those we have, they're not complete. They don't account for all the victims, but they account for many thousands of them. Uh, however, if we're talking about the 1880s pogroms, if we're talking about the 1905, 1903 pogroms, uh, you might have to look at newspapers that may mention the names of victims. I think in Kishinev, which was covered by the media, kind of, that's why it's famous. It's not 
it actually was a very small pogrom compared to some of the other ones. Not to like minimize anything, but some of the much, much worse ones never got that uh, uh, renown. Um, they, you know, they would have some names in, in those kinds of newspaper articles sometimes, but... And photographs. And photographs. I've seen in newspapers, right? Yes. Yeah. So even if people can, if they know someone in their family or if they're doing historical re research about programs, even if they don't find names, they could still find newspaper articles, photographs, yeah. and know um, what the context was. Yeah. Um, and... It, it's interesting you're saying that the time period of when pogroms occurred in general at all is decades and decades um, from the 1880s through the 1920s. Basically, so, that's like the modern, the modern Russian po pogrom. And you had mentioned things in Poland and Iran, and uh, there's these other episodes which are... You know, there's these. De there, it's debatable how we classify these things, but the term pogrom has been applied to all of them. Yes. Um, what do you think about um, how the pogroms might be seen as a precursor or uh, related in some way to later violence and genocide of the Holocaust? Yeah, uh, so that's an interesting question. Um, it depends how you look at it. This is a very obviously debatable point. Um, I'm going to look at it from a concrete perspective of comparison of things that we can kind of measure. And from that perspective, there's no connection. There's no, there's the, the scale of the Holocaust is so many orders of magnitude greater than any of these waves of pogroms it's mind-boggling like again the worst ones that we that that happened which were in the uh, the russian civil war period i think the highest estimate i've ever seen is maybe a little over a hundred thousand or something so and obviously the holocaust we're talking about six million um the methods used are completely different in the holocaust we're talking about death camps and mass machine gunnings over like days like bobby r and things like that pogroms is like you know the like a local riot or some or some like ragtag band of soldiers walks in and starts shooting people and they and the, the other thing is there this is also key the pogroms were not looking to exterminate the jews as a race right it was not it was scattershot it was not systematic like let's find every jew that we know exists and compile lists and like it was it was much more scattershot and uh kind of erratic uh they were even called uh it, in at the time uh, many of those pogroms of the russian civil war period the worst ones were just called excesses that's what they refer to them as which kind of gives you an idea of what it is it's sort of like they're like the, the situation is really bad it's the middle of a war people don't have everyone's kind of deprived of stuff and then there's just this boiling up of anger and they take it out on sort of a vulnerable population uh whereas the holocaust is a is like a much more planned and coordinated um e effort at extermination so i mean the, the more debatable point is like is there some some way that somebody in germany was influenced in their mind by the the pogroms but i i don't i don't know how to speak to that i'm not aware of any evidence that somebody some nazi so, sort of looked at the pogroms and was like this is why i want to you know take it an to another step further you know i'm not aware of that right. um interesting so uh People can find books, they can research this period of history. Um, I so mostly know about the pogroms of that, the, the Russian Civil War pogroms, which are not as known uh, so, sort of through, through the American Jewish mythology. Um, I'm not, I can't think of any book off the top of my head for the, uh, the 1880s pogroms. 
That's interesting in and of itself, because as you've let us know, that period, that wave of pogroms was much smaller, less significant in the scale and scope of what would come later. Although in the American Jewish imagination, it, it looms larger because of, of our mythology, collective mythology of, of uh, motivation for Jewish migration in the turn of the century. But yeah. a, a less, less documented. Um, so that in and of itself is interesting for people to, to learn. Mm -hmm. I, I just I'll throw out a really interesting fact about this. The the pogroms in the Russian Empire, so before the re revolution, accounted for less deaths than anti-Catholic violence in the United States. Wow! So that's so for a com for a comparison to what when we talk about the Holocaust, just like what a completely completely different scale it is. The pogroms of the Russian Empire were. Yeah, so that that should yeah, right. not you know of course they're still very serious, and uh, people often cited them as reasons to leave. But I've even heard people sort of I've even heard accounts of people saying that that was sort of not really the reason they left. That they were actually trying to dodge the draft into the Russian army, and and they sort of used that as an excuse. So I don't know. <laughs> right. But, well, it, it, it's nice to. Um learn these paths for to to more research to these myths that these myths and kind of background stories that um a lot of american jews have heard of my grandfather came to america escaping the the pogroms like uh, fiddler on the roof may have influenced this idea or american tale cartoon with Fievel Mouskowitz, the little mouse that escapes from the cats. So it, it's good to learn that these weren't such organized, specific, top-down um, events like may have been portrayed in film and cartoon, um, but nonetheless an interesting part of, a, of Jewish history. Definitely. Great. Well, thanks a lot, Ilya. I hope we'll see you again for a future um, genealogy coffee break topic. Um, and we appreciate elucidating this, um, this period of history. Thank you very much. I look forward to talking further some other time too. All right. Bye -bye. All right. Bye.